Hello and welcome once again to Home Bible Study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Holler thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. And also to those that subscribe and view, comment and respond. A heartfelt thank you. Today's topic, ladies and gentlemen, is Christianity the mark of the beast? Now, this might be one of the most important videos I'm going to make in my ministry, to this day anyway. And the reason I put down this topic and this subject title is from things I've been observing, and I've kept my eyes open and my ears tuned to what's being taught out there in the world. Uh, and uh, I've always had in the back of my mind for many years now studying scripture uh, about things that are in the book of Revelation concerning the second coming and, of course, the mark of the beast and uh, the beast. And I've done a video on who the beast is. It is not the Antichrist. And it's interesting because those that teach that the Antichrist is the beast in the book of Revelation are also the ones that are teaching on what is the mark of the beast. And these are Christian organizations that affiliate themselves as Christians and with the religion of Christianity. Now, that brought me to the uh, attention of what I've been listening to and what I've been researching and looking up in Scripture. And it's after uh, observing many videos and many different teachers uh, it's kind of showing something that isn't being presented, being well hidden and completely obscure to those proclaimed believers that call themselves Christians and affiliate with Christianity. Now, why would I make a statement like, is Christian, or ask the question, is Christianity the mark of the beast? Well, let's look at this from Scripture. Now, what I am going to present to you is teachings from Christianity, if you will, Christian churches, and from Christian denominations, and people proclaiming to be Christians about the mark of the beast. Now, there's been hundreds and hundreds of theories uh, about what is the mark of the beast uh, throughout the ages, especially the last 100 years to 150 years, if not longer. And in it's what people prefer to re, uh, to iterate and teach is it's all symbolic as the book of Revelation because the book of Revelation is all about prophecy. And again, that should, a little light should come on uh, when I tell you the book of Revelation is a book of prophecy and that's what it says in the first chapter that is a book of prophecy. Now, when talking about the mark of the beast, uh, a lot of Christian organizations will relate it to being a religion or something associated with a religion. And it's very interesting when you look at it from that perspective. But they, what they will do, they will get in and they will use scripture. See, they will use scripture to teach you about the mark of the beast or what is the mark of the beast per se and they will go into places like and one of my observed recently was an over over an hour long presentation and this so-called teacher that was presenting it had to be on drugs and i don't say that lightly because he talked a mile a minute and he was condescending to the audience and he had the audience under his total domain. And he was telling them all about the different things that society, mankind, in studying the mark of the beast, think that it is anything from a social security number to chips to electronic devices, all these things he brought into play. But he said, we're not interested in that, people. We're interested in what the Bible says. So I decided I was going to listen to what this joker had to say. Now, this joker is part of a denominational religion in Christianity. I want to bring that to the forefront. 
And he talked about the mark of the beast. And he wanted to know, and he stressed it, that he wanted to know what the Bible says about it. But it was interesting that also he had a pamphlet that was printed out by him to a study guide. He was more interested in re relating to the study guide to look at the things than to what the Bible said. It was very important to him. And in the audience, everybody had one of these sheets of a study guide to go by. And then also he would use scripture. It's just interesting always when mankind has to do that with the word of God, when they tell you they're interested in what the Bible says, not what man says. Well, this joker was a 50-50 split. I would say 75-25 with his pamphlet versus scripture. But one of the places he got very interesting in, and I was, again, had my eyes open, my ears open, and my Bible open. He talked about the mark of the beast of what he thinks it is as to what he thinks the scripture says. And it's interesting, and this is where the red flag came up immediately with me. He said it has to do with the law. It has to do with the law of God. He got more into that, and then he wanted to use Scripture. So he went back to the Ten Commandments and recited the first four of the Ten Commandments. And one of the things he emphasized was keeping the Sabbath. A holy day of worship to God. Now, I'm not going to get into that part because I want to do a video on the Sabbath day versus man Sunday in a later video. But in this particular video, he was talking about the mark of the beast. And he went to the book of Deuteronomy. And I'm going to read to you what it is he read and presented in his argument as to what the mark of the beast is. Now, he quoted in Deuteronomy chapter 12. And we'll start in verse 19. He said, and this is the Lord that God talking. And ye shall teach them your children. Speaking of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down and when thou risest up. In verse 20, and thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and on thy gate, gates. Verse 21, in your days may be multiplied so that your days may be multiplied. In the days of your children, in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. So in this passage, which is again, where? It's in the Old Testament under the law. It tells how you shall teach your children and you should constantly teach them when they're awake. Because it said in verse 19, you shall teach them, your children, speaking of them, when they sitteth in thy house or when they walketh by the way, and when they lieth down, and when they rise up. So the only time you're not to teach them about God's law is when they're sleeping. Now I'm going to give you another one that uh, he also talked about. But it's interesting with that fact is in uh, the book of Jeremiah, Something comes up after the book of Deuteronomy, quite a while after, ladies and gentlemen. God makes an interesting note about something. And he says, and this will start in verse 33 of Jeremiah chapter 31. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. And write it in their hearts, and they will be, I will be their God, and they will be my people. Verse 34, and they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them to the greatest of them, saith the Lord. I will forgive their iniquities and remember their sins no more. And one other thing I want to reiterate that was in Deuteronomy that I failed to present in chapter 12 uh, was in verse 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand and they may be as frontlets between your eyes 
which is actually your forehead. So here they were teaching you that the sign of God is going to be on your hand and on your forehead. Now he was relating back to the mark of the beast where the Bible says you will receive the mark where? And your hand, your right hand, or on your forehead. Now it's interesting that he would teach this in relationship to what is said in Revelation chapter 13. And I'm going to read it to you, what it says about the mark of the beast and where it is to be received. And this is in chapter 13. It is in verse 16. It says, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads. So here he has an or, an option of the hand or the forehead. Where God said in Deuteronomy 12, it'll be a sign upon your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. Okay, he said, that God's law will be on the forehead in Deuteronomy. That's not what the Bible says, ladies and gentlemen. Let me read you verse 18 of Deuteronomy first. I'm just giving you an overall view as to why I think Christianity itself is the mark of the beast. Verse 18, there sh Therefore shall ye lay up these my words, and it's talking about the law here, in your heart and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontless between your eyes, as they may be. He doesn't say to bind them on your hand and on your forehead. This joker said that's what it was saying. And again, in the book of Revelation, it gives you an and or, an option. He didn't touch on that. He glossed over that very quickly and didn't bring it up. And see, that's how clever a Satan can be when you're not having your Bible open, you're not a student of the Word of God, you're not researching this and looking up exactly what it really says. So with that premise being said, he concluded that the law of God is the mark of God. It is the name of God, is his law. And uh, he used a lot of scripture to, to promote that also. So he said in the book of Revelation, the mark of the beast is going to be a false mark pertaining to the law of the dragon is going to be his name it is going to be a religion now if that being the case here's the only thing you can surmise from the whole thing first of all this gentleman is affiliated with a christian church a christian denomination in the realm of the religion of christianity that's the first thing i want to bring out and he going, goes after what he thinks it means by script, going by Scripture and Scripture only. However, he brings in his little pamphlet that he printed out and, and made out as an outline for the study. Very important to include this, he said, so you could follow along, of course. So mankind's finite mind was into it already. But here's what I want you to look at. And he, he isn't the only one. There's a lot of them that teach about the mark of the beast and what they think it is through Scripture from many different branches of the religion of Christianity. And, and let me point something out to you that is not in Scripture at all. Christianity, the name Christianity, the word Christianity does not exist in the Bible. That's the first thing you remember. The second thing is, these preachers that I listen to and these teachers are all affiliated with a denomination of a Christian church under the realm of Christianity. Now, I tell you this, you can look in Scripture. There isn't one place in Scripture you're going to find the name of the denominations that claim to be Christians, that are claimed to be in the realm of Christianity, and members of the body of Christ that isn't found in Scripture. It is not. There's no such thing as a Baptist. There's no such thing as... Pentecostal, there's no such thing as Catholicism, there's no such thing as Lutheranism, there's no such thing as Presbyterianism, there's no such thing as Mormonism, there's no such thing as 
Jehovah Witness. There's no such thing in Scripture of any church denomination that is affiliated with Christianity found in Scripture. Yet these are the experts that are telling you the mark of the beast is found in Scripture that it is actually going to be the law of God. And then he and and it really the red flag came by when he started saying it's about God's law. And then he went into misteaching completely about 144,000 witnesses, where the Bible specifically says they are taken out of each tribe of Israel, 12,000 from each tribe. He didn't bring that into play, by the way. He didn't say that was Jews only. See, he left all that out. But he said, these are the ones that are going to be the ones that are going to be saved out of the tribulation. So I figure this person is probably Je related with Jehovah's Witnesses. I'm not sure what his denominational affiliation is, but it's totally wrong teaching. Now you take all this and you lump it together. And let's look at a few things. We're going to bring in Paul's teachings because he didn't bring in Paul's teachings at all. He left out the doctrine for the body of Christ church, which is the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ to us today in the finished work of the cross, in the but now of the cross, the dispensation of the grace of God that we're in. He went back to the Old Testament. And again, I tell you this, when you study the word of God, he does not study the word of God. In fact, none of the people that I listened to studied the word of God, the Bible, the way Jesus Christ commands us to. None of them. Because they did what? They mixed law and grace. And if it's law and grace, let's say what this joker was presenting is true. Then he is condemning himself, his religion, and what he's teaching. Because already, if you look at it, Christianity is not in Scripture. Christianity was formed around 300 AD by the Roman Catholic Church. It was formented as a religion's name. Where did this come from? Well, it could only come from one entity, and that is Satan, ladies and gentlemen. The only reason I say that is Jesus Christ went to the cross and abolished religion. He abolished the law. That's scriptural, but you only find that in the writings of Paul the Apostle. See, you won't find that in the writings from Genesis to uh, the book of Acts. You won't find that from Hebrews through the book of Revelation. It does not exist. It only exists from Romans through Philemon, the finished work of the cross. That is where the law was abolished. How do we know that? You have to read the book of Galatians. Jesus Christ became our curse of the law when he was nailed to that tree because it says it is written, everyone that hangs on a tree is a curse of God. So the law was a curse to us, yet he's teaching the law of God is going to be written on our hand and then on our forehead. And then what, what he means by that is you're going to do good works with your hands because you're a Christian. And you're going to have good thoughts and you're going to know about the Word of God because you're a Christian. That's what that means when you follow his teachings about the mark of the beast. But it's going to be the mark of God that is going to be in these 144,000 that are saved and evangelizing the world. So he's, get, he's mixing it up, and, and if you're not a student of the Word of God, he can get you quite confused and easily follow along what he's teaching. Again, all of these that I listened to have all been associated with a, a denomination of some kind, and they've all been professing Christians in the realm of Christianity. Now I'm going to ask you this question. Is Christianity the mark of the beast? When you think about it, if you're teaching that it is God's law that's going to be written, and you're going to be, you're going to be, it's going to be written in your heart, so you're going to exhibit God's law through the good works of your hands and the good thoughts that you have, so that people will recognize you're a Christian. Is that the mark of God? Is that the seal of God? For those that are off sealed, the 144,000 received the seal of God, which is a law of God. Can't deny that. You can find that in Scripture. But you have to remember you study the Word of God the way Jesus Christ commands you to. Because if you don't, you will be in the same category as these people present 
what they think is the mark of the beast as a religion. They really don't even realize they are telling the world what they believe, what they follow. They are actually taking the mark of the beast already. They don't realize that. That's why Christianity is the mark of the beast. And those that affiliate with Christianity and refuse to separate, to rightly divide the word of truth, to understand the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, where we are saved by grace through faith only, by the finished work of the cross, will never accept it. They'll never see it. And they will die as taking the mark of the beast already. Because those that are left behind are going to be ones that will believe the great lie and continue because God will give them over to a great delusion to believe the lie. And there's no hope for them once the age of grace is over, ladies and gentlemen. He was telling his people that they, they including himself, will never have the mark of the beast because they have the true religion of Christianity in their back pocket. They're Christians. And that's what's interesting because I have never heard in the realm of Christianity now, in its teachings by Christians, in all the churches that claim to be of the body of Christ church, will always mix law and grace. Jesus Christ says you do not mix law and grace. Paul warned us about that. He said, if you mix law and grace, you have fallen from grace, and Christ will profit you nothing. So Christ will profit you nothing, and he will be of no effect unto you, Read about that in Galatians chapter 5. What is going to be left? You're going to cling to the law. You're going to cling to the law. Mix in a little grace. Doesn't do you any good at all. Because your minds are blinded by Satan, see? And God has not given you acknowledging a repentance on so that you can acknowledge him of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you cannot recover yourself out of the snare of the devil. Because that's the one that has you captive. And as long as he has you captive, the mark of the beast is from who? Who is the beast? Who is the dragon? It is Satan. Satan makes the uh, the beast. He brings out the beast. And he gives power to the beast and the second beast. and all. The, it's all based on Satan. Satan's religion is Christianity. It has to be because Jesus Christ in his earthly ministry went to the cross to abolish religion. Because that's what the Jews turned God's law into, was a religion. And evidently, you read where it says God's law, he said, mankind always takes God's law, makes it into the commandments of men, it becomes the traditions of men, then it becomes the doctrine of devils. And that's exactly what the Jews did in the nation of Israel with God's law. They made it into a religion. God never said it should be a religion. Never will you find that anywhere in Scripture. And then you find, interestingly enough, when you get into Paul's writing, he talks about grace. He talks about doing away with the law. There's no way in the age of grace that you can even keep the law. You couldn't before either. The law is there to remind us that we are sinners by nature in the natural man before we find saving grace. The only way we can get out of the bondage of the law is through the grace of Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross by faith and faith alone. That's a stumbling block to Christians. That's a stumbling block to Christianity. Satan will not permit that. Satan tells you, you need the whole Bible to be for you and to you, and you better be in line with all of it in order to get to the promised land, quote, unquote. And that's not true, ladies and gentlemen, but Christianity goes along with that, lock, stock, and barrel. They have been promoting and they have been teaching over the years about the mark of the beast being a religion. And they will go after certain religions that are also a part of Christianity. That's the iron irony of this whole thing. That's like Islam. You won't find Islam in the Holy Bible. You won't find Buddhism in the Holy Bible. You won't find Hinduism in the Holy Bible. The oldest shaman, priest, monks, you will not find any of that stuff in Scripture. Yet it's all religions of the world. 
and they're all being accepted, and they're all being practiced. And why do you think one of the largest growing, largest religions of the world is Christianity? Because Satan's putting a lot of effort into drawing people, making them believe they're Christians today. You know, it's, the, it's funny when you mention Christians, they get right away, get all bent out of shape that you have to be a Christian in order to be a believer in Jesus Christ. Because that's what the Bible said back in the book of Acts, they were first called Christians. But you see, Christianity will not teach you that those Christians were under the law. Because God never, Jesus Christ never told his 12 apostles that they were not no longer under the law. None of them knew that. And he didn't tell Paul at that point yet either. Paul was given that revelation when he was given the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ after those teachings when he spent that time at Antioch. See, all the people at Antioch were Jews. And it says in the Bible that they were Jews and they were taught only to the Jews. Well, what was taught to the Jews only was the doctrine of Jesus Christ's earthly ministry under the gospel of the kingdom, under the law. He had to endure to the end. He had to be baptized. You had to belong to the church of God, which Jesus Christ started in Matthew chapter 15. You had to do all these things. You had to work. And you had to endure to the end. That's one of the most important things because if you didn't, you would lose your salvation. You had to be born again. You had to do all these things under the law. You get to Paul's writings. None of that exists. You can find all these things in Scripture and you can try and tie them in and twist and pervert them to make people think that's what you should be doing today. And that's exactly what Christianity does. All their Christians do this. They're Christian leaders. They're denominations. They're non-denominations. They always mix law and grace. And when they mix law and grace, what are they taking on? According to what this guy was teaching, well, they took on the mark of the beast without even knowing it. And they won't know it until they're gone. You see, those of us that are saved by grace through faith in the finished work of the cross and are true members of the body of Christ church because we believe in the doctrine for the body of Christ church, which is the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ in the dispensation for the grace of God that we live in is from Romans through Philemon. We will never receive that mark of the beast because we won't be a part of it. Because when we, we go from death to life, that's how we inherit eternal life. This body has to die. But you see, those of Christianity that are Christians and practice under Christianity and mix law and grace, they go from life to death. Because they're told they have a new life in Christ. They're a new creation in life. So they're reborn again before they die. And then they die only to die again. The second death. Isn't that interesting? Grace teaches you, you have death and then life. That's what Jesus Christ teaches because he said, I am the life. It is me. It is through me, Jesus Christ. Everything is through Jesus Christ because he's life. And in him is life. In him is no death. So you go from death to life. Well, not in Christianity. In Christianity, if you follow the law and, and mix law and grace and do what Christianity tells you and what your denominations tell you and all your leaders tell you, you're going to go from life to death. Because you're going to be born again before you die. Otherwise, you're going to die. No, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to be born again under the law and you're going to practice the law, what did Paul say? Jesus Christ will profit you nothing. He will have no effect on you. In fact, you will have fallen from grace. And if you're fallen from grace, you have no alternative, whether you believe it or not, to take the mark of the beast. Because what are you falling back on? You're taking in account your religion. You as a Christian, being a member of Christianity, and they tell you you're a member of the body of Christ, you are totally comfortable with that. You don't need to do anything more. You've done everything you think you had to. You're going to be just fine. And who's telling you this? It's Satan telling you this through your religion. You want to talk about the mark of the beast. If you think the mark of the beast is a religion, then it has to be the religion of Christianity. It fits like a glove on a well-formed hand. All of it points to that. Even though within the religion of Christianity, you have certain denominations that point the finger at other denominations that they are part of the mark of the beast as a religion, as a false religion. Christianity, ladies and gentlemen, 
is a false religion. It doesn't exist in Scripture. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to say this, and I will continue to say this and stand by this until I'm taken out of this world. Christianity is a false religion. A false religion will be the mark of the beast. If that is the mark of the beast, Christianity is the mark of the beast. And get what? guess who? All the Christians that affiliate themselves with Christianity have taken already without even knowing it. Sure, it's going to become more apparent, ladies and gentlemen, in the end times. Because people will be killed for not taking the mark of the beast. You're not happening to you today, is it? Of course not. Because Satan has you believing you're in this age of grace. See, so it's not going to happen to you until you take your last breath. Then you'll be cast into hell, waiting for your demise in the second death at the great white throne judgment. That's the part that's hid from you in the religion of Christianity, see? They're going to tell you something like that. Why should they? You'd leave it lock, stock, and barrel. They'd go broke and they'd look like feces in this world, wouldn't they? Satan's counting on you not to do that. Satan's counting on you to continue to be a Christian, continue to affiliate with your religion of Christianity, and to listen to your leaders, and point your finger at other Christian churches, at other Christian denominations, and the non-denominations that affiliate yourself with Christianity, by the way, are the ones that are responsible for the mark of the beast, and are going to be in all this going back and forth, getting people totally confused, and they will use scripture to back up what it is they're teaching you. Do you realize what I read to you in Deuteronomy and in Jeremiah was what? That was in the Old Testament, under the law of God. And guess who it was for? It was for the nation of Israel, ladies and gentlemen. No mention of Gentiles here yet at all. None. Because you have to take and rightly divide the word of truth and you look at the five W's, the who, what, where, when, and why of these things are written. You can't put them in today's realm. You can't put them in with Roman Sufi Philemon. It doesn't fit at all. And to take them and put them in with the book of Revelation in the ages to come doesn't fit either. Because that's ages to come. This time in Deuteronomy and in Jeremiah was in times past, before the cross, before the coming, first coming of Jesus Christ, before his death, burial, and resurrection. It was under the law of God it was already given. And this is where the Jews were starting to take mankind's or God's law and turn it into a religion. And that was the demise of the nation of Israel. Why do you think Jesus Christ came in the form of a man? To save his nation of Israel. To save him from what? The sins of the world. What was the greatest sin of the world? Their religion, ladies and gentlemen. Because they were headed straight to hell. And a lot of them still went to hell. And they're waiting the great white throne judgment. And many more today are on that same path. Well, Jesus told them, broad is the path and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And many will follow through it. But narrow is the path, straight is the way, and few will find it. And that was for the nation of Israel. And that is true today. We don't have that in our teachings of the body of Christ Church, which isn't affiliated with Christianity. It is affiliated with no religion, because all religions, to include Christianity, has been contaminated by Satan. The body of Christ Church is without spot and without wrinkle, and it was kept secret from Satan since the foundation of the world only to be exposed now through his prophets and through the scriptures that the obedience is by faith and faith alone in the finished work of the cross called grace. You have your salvation. Not contaminated by Satan, by the way, but he again doesn't want you to believe that. He wants you to believe you need both the law and you need grace. And any time you take the law and you bring it into grace, you're contaminating what you think is the body of Christ church that you belong to, which is not at all true in the scriptures. You're already contaminated with the law because you are cursed of God if you continue in the law. There's no hope for you, none whatsoever. 
Just like you read about in the book of Revelation where they try to bring it into today's realm and tell you that the mark of the beast is a religion. Well, if that's the case, there's no hope for them either. They take the mark of the beast and, and it's proven in scripture. There is no turning back once they take the mark of the beast. What about you? You have in this age of grace, ladies and gentlemen, something they don't have in the book of Revelation, the chance to turn around and stop this madness and get away from Satan and his religion of Christianity and his Christians and his Christian leaders and his denominations and non-denominations that pollute this whole world on every church corner in every little town you want to go to in this world. You have a chance to escape that. They're not going to have that chance after the age of grace is gone and we're taken out of here, that age of grace is done. Once the age of grace is done, there's only going to be one thing left. They're going to be the law of God. But Satan's going to turn it into his law and become the mark of the beast, see? A false religion. A worldly religion. Because Jesus Christ told his people, how do you, who, who's God? God is a spirit. And those that worship God must worship him in spirit. What do you do in your churches? You worship God every day in the flesh, ladies and gentlemen. You get up, you get dressed in the flesh. You work to get dressed. You drive or walk to your church and you sit down and you go through these ritualistic things and you have every Sunday that you practice and you preach and you worship your God in the flesh. You're not worshiping in the spirit. Oh, you think you are. You're worshiping. See, you want to worship in both. You want to worship in the flesh and in the spirit. So you're mixing law and grace right there. You don't even realize it. If you're going to worship God in the Spirit, where do you have to go to worship God in the Spirit? Nowhere in this world is a place to go to worship God in the Spirit. No place. It's just like the member of the body of Christ. We have to have faith. And we walk by faith, not by sight. So we leave the physicality out of it. But in these teachings of these denominations that point to what is the mark of the beast, Oh, it's the law of God, but it's the physical characteristics also with the works of the hands and the thoughts of the people in their minds as they relate back to what is said in Deuteronomy. But what do they do with the ones, with the new covenant that's coming? There's no longer you're going to need to teach mankind. They will know it. They will have it in their hearts. So that puts a hole in his whole theory right off the bat. Do you understand where I'm getting at? Uh, it, it might seem a little deep, but if you understand Scripture and it's imperative, ladies and gentlemen, that you study the Word of God, not the way I study, but the way Jesus Christ commands you to study by rightly dividing the Word of Truth as He commands us to do. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, He says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divide the Word of Truth. And He says in verse 16, But avoid vain and profane babbling, for that will lead unto more ungodliness. And that's what happens if you get into watching these people and start believing what it is they say. You can easily get into this false religion. You can easily get caught up if your minds are blinded, see, to the truth of the Word of God, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ that can save you in this age of grace today. You have to separate, you have to rightly divide as Jesus Christ did on the cross. The great three divisions that he brought in on the cross. You have to honor that. The finished work of the cross. Don't deny the work of Jesus Christ. Because if you deny the work of Jesus Christ, you already have taken the mark of the beast. And you have no idea you did it. But it'll be shown to you. And there's not going to be any hope for you when you die. So you're going to be cast into hell knowing you're going to the great white throne judgment. Your fate is already sealed, but that seal isn't the seal of God. That is the seal of Satan and his religion of Christianity. The only way you can escape that, and there is only one way, and that is to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ by grace through faith. And that is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that what was preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, 4, I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how Christ had died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And verse 4, and then he was buried, that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. Now you believe that by faith and faith alone, because it says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, for by grace are ye saved, through faith, yet not of yourselves. 
It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. That's verse 9. If you're going to work with your hands to show you're a Christian, and you're going to have it in your mind, you're working. See, that's where he's also wrong. He's still under the law. That's why that whole presentation was a false presentation. That's why all these preachers and all these denominations under the realm of Christianity, as they call themselves Christians, of the religion of Christianity, are teaching a false message. They are condemning themselves right in front of the eyes of Jesus Christ, and they don't even realize it. They think they're following the Jesus Christ of Scripture. Oh, no, no. They're following. The angel of light has already transformed himself into that. He is presenting himself as the Jesus Christ of Scripture. He presents himself as the Jesus Christ of Christianity, the false religion. If Christianity is a false religion, what is the Jesus Christ of Christianity? He's a false Jesus Christ. Plain and simple. Believe what it is you want. Don't take my word for it. Research it. Look it up. You want to end up with the mark of the beast without you even really not realizing it, that you think it's all something else that you can visibly handle and ignore and reject. You've got another thing coming. Beware, ladies and gentlemen, of the mark of the beast, because it is cleverly hidden in your religion of Christianity. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. This is a home Bible study. My home to your home. This is Robert Holler. Thank you for taking the time to observe this very important video. And always remember, until next time.